Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godden and together we go through creating data elements in DHIS2. All right, so I'm back here with Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Nicholas. Hey, um, and today we're going to be doing uh, data element creation in DHIS2. So this is not the same as creating a config uh, sheet. This is actually making them one at a time in the system, right? Hmm. So uh, let's just jump in. We're just going to be looking at what it looks like and how to get there. And, and then I guess we're going to leave it up to you, the viewer, to <laughs> fill in the right information. That's not mm -hmm. our problem. Uh, so you, why don't you show us how we, how we go about doing that, Sarah? Perfect. So to add anything manually, you'll have to find the right app. So in this case, data elements is data elements and indicators. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using version 2.22 of DHIS, so it looks a little bit different. Um, but what you can do is just click on data element mm -hmm. and then either add new if you're using a previous version or press the plus. And here we're going to do a, a manual add. So mm -hmm. let's make a data element called, I don't know, maybe it's called number of crayons because we just filled out a color category and nice. it's on my mind. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so it's related to art. Um, now here you'll notice some things are required. So you need to have a name. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the others are optional, um, and it'll assign a default if you don't pick something. Yeah. So for code, this is optional. You can use a code that makes sense for your organization, and you can come back and change the code later if you need to. Mm -hmm. Same with description. It's nice to put what this actually means to you in your organization here. Mm -hmm. um, and description, when you make forms, the description can also appear on mobile apps. So it's nice to have a very clear, uh, brief description here. Yeah. Form name is the name that's going to appear on your data entry screen. So whether it's someone using a computer or an app to enter data, mm -hmm. this is what the person's actually going to see. So nice. I might make my form name, um, how many crayons in the box? And then a person can just you know, add in the number. Right, the, so it's a more intuitive, it's the, what the user uh, actually sees when they're entering data. Yeah, the short name is what's gonna appear on your report. So the short name appears in the legend mm -hmm. and you typically have a very small amount of space. That's why it's called short. You've got maybe 15 <laughs> to 20 letters that you can kind of squeeze in. So I don't even know if number of will fit, so I'm just gonna call it crayons. Could we also do a number sign maybe? You could, yeah, depending on, you know, a naming convention that you might prefer or some people do a number dot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, completely up to you. Mm -hmm. um, so here's where we have to make some choices. So yeah. is this a tracker program or is this just a regular aggregate? In this case, I'm going to pick aggregate. Mm -hmm. Value type is what's the type of um, data that you're collecting. So for me, number of crayons is a number. And I'm going to say that it can only be a positive integer. But I'm also going to say it could be zero. So I'm going to pick positive or zero integer. OK, awesome. And these are all preset by the system. Mm -hmm. And if you if you don't pick, I think I'm not sure if the default is text, but this is one of those. If you don't make a selection, it'll kind of choose for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the default um, for aggregation is sum. And for me, for number of crayons, I would want to sum the, the number. So that's mm -hmm. fine. I'll keep it as sum. Cool. Mm hmm. Now, depending on your numbers, you may want to choose to store zero values if it makes sense. For, for me, it does, because I'll say if someone doesn't have crayons, that that's important to know. Yep. Um, now, the next couple pieces of information, this is like if you have mo uh, a website or a, you know um, an address that's relevant to this data element, it's kind of like a description field, but specifically for a web address that would make sense. I don't have one, so I'm going to leave a blank for okay. now. For category combination, this is nice because in the previous, we just set up a category of colors. So because I've previously set this up, it becomes an option here. And I'm going to say that colors is uh, how I want to further disaggregate my number of crayons. Perfect. And it's also mm -hmm. a good option, uh, a good opportunity to talk about option set because we could have said an option set were colors so that mm -hmm. you could say, uh, you know, choose the color of the crayon. The option would be red, blue, green. But then we wouldn't be able to say how many of red, how many of blue, how many of green, so that it was better to choose as a disaggregate category combination for this instance. Yeah, absolutely. And you can come in and change these later. So mm -hmm. say you want to make your data elements first, and then you create your categories later. That's no problem. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we're not going to pick anything for option set because mm -hmm. we have a category on this one. Legend set's kind of the same. Um, so this one's more related to when you're mapping, right, Nicholas? Yeah, that's something that you create. Uh, you set your legend in the um, mapping app, mm -hmm. uh, but you're able to view it either in the mapping app or in the pivot tables. And we talk about that in those videos. Mm -hmm. So for this data element, I'm not sure which um, aggregation level I should pick or if it matters. Let's just pick maybe Let's, country. I think for facility fun. would be good actually because our facilities yeah. are schools. Okay. So oh, we can use sense. yeah our facilities. Okay. And by default, if you don't make a choice, it's available for everything, I believe. Okay. Great. So we've got our data element finished. Um, should we create a group? Uh, yeah, let's do that next time, actually. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, that was pretty quick and easy. Um, mm -hmm. So if you yeah reference the assignment page, um, we've lined out some of the different integer types and some. And you can always take a look at the manual because there's a bit more description as to what these value types mean. And these are really important. So it's really important to understand value types. So I'm sure after you've gone through the lesson with Nicholas, you have a better sense of uh, what's going to make sense for your data elements. So. Definitely, and it's good to know for when you're doing your config sheet. And uh, finally, what we're looking at here in this video are actually screenshots from the earlier versions, which is just why they look a little bit different. Mm. But uh, I think that's good for now, so thanks so much, Sarah. Great, thank you. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 